الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل القرآن تبيانا لكل شيء الحمد لله أشكره وأحمده وأشكره وأستعين به وأعوذ به من شرور نفسي ومن سيئات عملي اللهم أحلل عقدة من لساني أفقه قولي اللهم أنزل علينا السكينة وبارك في هذا المكان وفر حاضرين يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى sent his messenger and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إنما بعدت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق I was only sent and, and the Arabs use إنما for what's called أدة الحصري to, to really focus in on what's going to be said either بالإضافة أو حقيقة and he said صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما بعدت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق to perfect or to complete noble character and the Prophet ﷺ said that people will achieve with good character what people don't achieve with fasting and praying the Prophet ﷺ, when he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Al-Yaman one of his uh, he said you know, treat people with good character and among the most important qualities of good character is preoccupying oneself with one's own business. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is a hadith that uh, Imam Nawawi puts in his 40 hadith. It's related by Imam at Tirmidhi, but it's also a hadith that Abu Dawud, the, uh, the great muhaddith and the writer of the Sunan, said is one fourth. He said all of Islam revolves around four sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, and he put this hadith as one of them. So this is like 25% of the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, وسلم, من حسن إسلام المرئي تركه ما لا يعنيه From the good or the beautiful Islam of a, of a Muslim, of a, a man or a woman obviously, is to leave off what does not concern oneself. Uh, Imam Malik was once asked how old he was and he said Aqbal ala sha'nak just mind your own business What's, why do you need to know what somebody's age is how does that help you this is what uh, Imam Sa'duddin Tabtazani in his remarkable commentary on this hadith he says that tarkuhu ma la ya'nihi includes your actions it includes your aqwal za'ida, fudul al-kalam, what the Arabs call fudul al-kalam, excessive speech. He said that it includes also concerning oneself with the most important things. And he said these are essentially your livelihood, your, your worldly concerns, and your other worldly concerns. One of the salaf was walking by a, a house and he asked, Imam al-Ghazali mentions this, and he asked the uh, the... The, the person he was with, whose house is that? He, he said he fasted after that for, for several days just as a kafara because he was fudul uh, al-kalam, whose house is that? This quality of Islam, and when he said, min husni Islam al mar'i, Sa'duddin Tabtizani says, min kamal al-Islam, it's from the complete Islam. It's, it's from the Islam. There are many hadiths, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى. It means your iman is not complete. So your Islam is not complete until you leave off what does not concern you. Imam al-Ghazari anhu mentions that uh, Ibn al-Mubarak was once ذُكِرَ تَرْغِيبَةُ عِنْدُهُ Like, ghiba was mentioned in his presence. And he said, if I was going to backbite, I would backbite about my mother. 
because she he ahqqun nas bi hasanati she deserves my hasanat more than anyone al hasan al basri somebody told him so and so said such and such about you in other words back backbiting so he sent him tabaq min al ratab he sent him a plate of dates and he said i heard you had some bad things to say about me i just wanted to recompense for giving me those hasanat ma'ruf al karhi uh, once he he was always uh, doing night prayers and one night he didn't do the prayers his wife uh, she complained this is a good wife telling him why didn't you pray last night uh, he said well uh, so and so i know he does the night prayers but he was backbiting about me yesterday so he gave me his night prayers so i took a day off people don't think about this but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said inna ahadkum la yatakallamu bil karima la yulqi laha bala la yulqi laha bala a man will speak a word and not really give it any consideration that word tahwa bihi fi nari jahannam it will take him into hell and he said in the ar-rajul yatakallam bil karima la yunqi laha bala in fi in a riwayah fi ridwanillah in what pleases allah wa yarfa'u fi darajatihi it it will elevate him in paradise yarfa'uhu fil jannah so we don't think enough about our speech allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about this he says subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, وَلَقَدْ خَرَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْرُمْ مَا تُوَسُّسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ We created the human being and we know what's being whispered in the hearts. We know what's going on in your hearts. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to him than his carotid artery. We are closer to him, in other words, than his consciousness itself. The odaj, these are the, 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 the carotid and the jugular vein that bring the blood up and bring it back down to the heart that's without that if you shut somebody off people who that do jiu jitsu here know you put somebody in a certain lock and you can uh, put them into unconsciousness very quickly because that's the source of your consciousness in in the material world is the blood that's going to your your brain you cut that off and and you 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 lose your consciousness so allah says we are closer إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ When the two who are there to receive everything مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيبٌ These two are there. They're on the right and on the left قَعِيد waiting. رَقِيبًا عَتِيد And they're marking everything down. Nothing is omitted. Nothing is omitted. Think about that. Imam Malik رضي الله عنه said إِذَا دَرَ الْمَرْءُ أَنَّ كَلَامُهُمْ مِنْ عَمْرِهِ قَلَّ كَلَامُهُ When a man realizes that his words are part of his actions, his words diminish. Because it's all muhasaba. Everything you say is going to be, it's recorded. And you know, the amazing thing, like I'm recording this for somebody, the amazing thing is, we have these signs now. Like here I am speaking, And Allah says, so urikum ayati, I'm going to show you my signs. فَلَتَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Don't be hasty about this. I'll show you my signs. You don't think I can record every single thing you say? You have machines now that record everything you say. You don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't record everything we say? مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ Not one utterance comes out except that it's recorded. Big problem. So the Prophet ﷺ was warning us because he's Bashir but he's also Nadir. A woman lost her son in, in uh, one of the Ghazawat. And the Prophet ﷺ, he heard her say, Haniyan lakal jannah, you know, congratulations the jannah. And he said, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلُّهُ تَكَلَّمَ فِي مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ Maybe he spoke about things that were of no concern. He told Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said, can I tell you what? Do you want the pen? 
the pen and everything it's writing down. He said, can I tell you uh, something that if you do it, that you won't, the pen won't be recording. And Abu Hurair said, of course. He said, Adir Fara'id. Do the Fara'id. And he said, Ishtanib Maharam Allah. Avoid all of the prohibitions. So here's Awamir and Nawahi. Do the Awamir, do the commandments, and avoid the prohibitions, inwardly and outwardly. And then he said, Wada'ad Kalam fi la yani. And leave talking about what does not concern you. Leave talking about what doesn't concern you. Ya'niq aqbil ala sha'nak. Malik, that's actually a musalsa from Malik. Imam Shafi'i, after that, because he asked him about his age, after that, anybody that asked Imam Shafi'i about his age, he would say, aqbil ala sha'nak. Because he learned that from his teacher. So we don't think about this, we don't think about the tongue. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, one of the beloved companions of the Prophet, Allah minu hibuka ya Mu'adh. I love you, Mu'adh. Mu'adh was traveling with the Prophet وسلم, and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, tell me something that akhbirni. Tell me what will get me into paradise. And keep me far from the hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ said, سألت عن عظيم, You've asked about a momentous thing. A momentous thing. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ لِمَنْ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ But it's an easy thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَسَّرَهُ Made it easy for him. Then he said, تُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ Believe in Allah. لا تشرك به شيئا. توتي الزكاة. تصوم رمضان. وتحج البيت. Do the five pillars. And then he said, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. ألا أخبرك على أبواب البر? Can I tell you the doors of righteousness? الصوم جنة. Fasting is a protection. It's a protection. When you fast, you're not going to be sinning. We know in Ramadan, we've all experienced it. You're, you're much more guarding yourself. You're aware of yourself. Asomu Jannah. Jannah is something you hide behind. It's something that protects you, the shield. وَالصَّدَقَةُ تُطْفِيرْ خَطِيئَةَ كَمَا يُطْفِي الْمَاءُ النَّارِ And sadaqa, charity, will, will obliterate sin the way fi- water puts out fire. وَصَرَةَ الرَّجَلْ مِنْ جَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ And the prayer of a man in the night. And then فَتَلَى تَتَجَافَى جِنُوبُهُمْ عَنَ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمْعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ فَلَا تَدْنِ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ, من قَرَّةِ عَيُونٍ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And then he re- read these ayahs from Surah Al-Sajda that they are those who raise تتجافى, عن المضاجع, on those places where they sleep calling on Allah in hope and in fear fear of the fire and hoping for Jannah and they give out they're charitable and then sallallahu alayhi wa about تتجافى, he there's a khilaf about it most of them say it's the Tahajjud prayers. But there's a very interesting opinion. It's mentioned in the Mufassirun. One of the opinions is that it's any prayers after uh, Ghurub al-Shams. Because the Jahili Arabs, you know, it was very hot in Arabia. And the Jahili Arabs would actually sleep after Maghrib. And that's why waiting for the night prayer, because the Prophet ﷺ delayed the night prayer, that was a type of Tahajjud for the Arabs because they were accustomed to sleeping after the, the Ghurub al-Shams. So they had to actually wait. And so that's tahajjud in Arabic means to avoid sleep, putting off sleep for the people of Sarf here, the students, right? It's tafa'ul for tajannub, avoiding hujud. So that's why uh, in the Maliki school, any prayers after the six prayers after Maghrib, the two prayers after Isha and any prayers after that time is considered tahajjud. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
ألا أخبرك أنا على رأس الأمر Can I tell you what the what the real head of this whole thing is? وعموده وذروة سنامه its pillar and its pinnacle its acme. بلا يا رسول الله tell me معاذ رضي الله عنه wants to hear tell me and he said رأس الأمر الإسلام the foundation of this is Islam وعماده الصلاة and its central pillar is prayer وذروة سنامه الجهاد which if you read the books it's not just military jihad it's all forms and this is why the Malikis in the Bab al-Jihad put all the fara'id al-kifaya. Jihad is one aspect. The, 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 mater- the, the uh, physical fighting, protecting the barriers, the ribat of the Muslim uh, lands. That's one aspect. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah adulluka ala milaki dharika kulli. Can I tell you how to get all of this? All of this. Think about all of this. How do, how do I get all of this? فَأَخَذَ بِلِسَانِهِ فَعَلَيْكَ هَذَا That's how you get all of it. Just take hold of your tongue. Ibn Mas'ud said, the thing that deserves prison most is the tongue. When the Prophet ﷺ said that, what did Mu'az say? Are we going to be taken to account for what we actually say? Because they're thinking action, speech. They're thinking action. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, This is an Arab idiom. It's not, a, if you translate it directly, it sounds very bad. You know, may, may your mother weep over your death. But, but it's an idiom like, just shock. Like Mu'adh. How could you say that? Are people thrust into the hellfire on their faces, dragged? Mukibban ala wajhihi, the Quran says. And, and they said, how does a man walk on his face? He said, the one that made them walk on his two feet will make him walk on his face. Look at the, the, uh, the snake, walks on his belly. Yimshi in Arabic. Yimshi ala batnihi. That's what, that's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. It's an amazing hadith. Amazing hadith. All of that, guard your tongue. The Prophet in the Muatabi Mamarik, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man waqahu Allahu sharra ithnain, wala jal jannah. Whoever is protected from two evils will enter paradise. And then they, they waited, and then somebody said, Ya Rasulullah, are you going to tell us what they are? And he was silent. And then the man repeated it again. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was silent. And then the man repeated again and somebody told him, stop. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ وَقَاهُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ إِثْنَيْنِ وَرَجَ الْجَنَّةِ مَا بَيْنَ لَعْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ مَا بَيْنَ And then he repeated it three times. What's between his two jaws and what's between his two thighs. The tongue and the genitals. And they're related. Because there's a pleasure in speaking. And in fact, Imam al-Ghazali says, there are people, يَتَلَذَّذُوا بِالْخَوْضِ فِي أَعْرَاضِ النَّاسِ They get a pleasure out of speaking ill of other people. That it's a type of pleasure. They enjoy speaking ill of other people. Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Mu'adh, and there's a... You know, either it's Mawquf Ali or some uh, Imam al-Ghazali, Yarfa'u ila Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa for those of you who know, know that sign. He said, La tumazziq bi risanika a'rad hamarat al-Quran wa tulab al-ilm. Do not rip up, tear up with your tongue the good honor of those who carry the Quran and of those who are seeking knowledge. 
فَتُمَزِّقَكَ كِرَابُ النَّارِ And then you're ripped apart by the dogs of hell. And the tongue, the tongue is a weighty thing. Ar-Rahman, Alam al-Quran, Kharaq al-Insan, Alamuhu al-Bayan, it comes last. Why does it come last? So the first is the Quran, and then the next is the, 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 the creation of the human being, and then the tongue. And this is because without the Qur'an, you are not in the maqam of insan. <laughs> and once you are in the maqam of insan, you're ready for bayan. And there's no wow, there's no at there. There's no ar-Rahman, alam al-Qur'an, wa khalaq al-insan, wa allamahu al-bayan. So... This is a big problem. People love fitna. Ibn Qutayba says, أَحَبُّ شَيْءٍ إِلَى الْفُسَاقِ زَلَّةُ العالم. The thing that the fusaq, the bad people love the most, is when scholars slip up. Very interesting statement. Oh, can't wait. Tell everybody. So and so. Look what he said. Look what he did. Why? Because they want to bring them down to their level. They're just like us. There's, there's no namudhij. There's no exemplars. We're all pathetic. So it becomes an excuse for them not to rise themselves. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيْلُ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ Who are the humaza? الْعَيَّابُ nas. The people that find fault in other people. The people that seek out their faults, they seek out their awrat to expose them. Well, what is that? Why do they enjoy that so much? Because they're sick. Just sick people. Love to talk. Love to expose the faults of others. This is, this is the world we live in. It's, it's an old story. We're just here for a little while. We'll be gone and then there's a whole other group of people. They're going to do the same thing. But Yom Qiyamah, Waylun. Waylun. It's said that it's a valley in hell. There's a lot of valleys in hell. There's one called Bolis, right? That is just for the tyrants. Khuluhum ila Bolis, you know, the police. That's what it's called in the hadith, is Bolis. Amazing. International word that the tyrants use everywhere take them to the police and then on Yom Qiyamah the tyrants bolis. take them to bolis it's in a hadith sahih <coughs> Yom Qiyamah everybody's gonna see it all be revealed you're gonna see who's who who was sincere who was a munafiq the Prophet and I'll just conclude there's a lot of things you could say about this Maharam al everybody should read that text in fact we should reread it until we actually implement it. Because these are reminders. I'm reminding myself, trust me. I'm reminding myself. I'm not uh, innocent. This is a big, big human problem. But there are situations where the tongue is necessary. And this is important. And I'll conclude with this. But it's also with a caveat that one has to be very careful. The, uh, they say, uh, that backbiting is, it's a kabira, it's considered a kabira, like namima. And the Prophet ﷺ once passed a grave and he said, uh, and, and, and he said, they're being punished. And he said, it's not a big thing. In the comments, we say, in their opinion, and the Prophet said, but it's an enormity. And he said, one of them, he used to go around telling things that would make people not like other people. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا تطع كل حلاف المهين مشاءن بالنمي حمازن مشاءن بالنمي Don't obey any, all these people that, wallahi, 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 low people that go around finding fault in other people and they do their namima when namam la yadkhul al jannah 
So he said, he said, فَجَنِّبْ غِيبَةً إِلَّا حُرُوفًا Avoid ghiba except for seven things. بِبَيْتٍ جَاعًا بَعْضَ الْأَكَابِرِ They put it in one line. تَظَلَّمْ وَاسْتَغِثْ وَاسْتِفْتِ حَذِّرْ عَرِّفْ وَعَرِّفْ بِدْعَةً وَفِسْقَ الْمُجَاهِرِ These are the only seven things. تَظَلَّمْ Somebody is oppressing you and you're trying to get help. Then you can tell them. استفتي استغث you're in a situation like somebody's stealing something from you or something then there's istighatha right asking for another situation the tawallam is going to authorities and tell something that happened like going to the court where you have to tell somebody stole your money or something istighatha is when you're actually in the situation wastafti and asking an opinion The, uh, Fatima bint Qais came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, Ya Rasulullah, khatabani Abu al-Jahmi wa Mu'awiyah, Ibn Abi Sufyan. They, they proposed to me. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Amma Mu'awiyah fa sul'u, la ma'ala lahu. Mu'awiyah, he's a su'luk, you know, poor man. He doesn't have any wealth. And he said, Wa Abu al-Jahmi, la yarfa'u asahu an atiqi. He doesn't remove his stick from his shoulder. In another riwayah, which is, that's Mujmal, Mubayyan lahu, for the people who have studied this, he says, Darrabun uh, linnisa. He hits women. So he wasn't backbiting, he was explaining. But if you add other things that aren't important, like uh, when somebody asks you, I'm, I'm planning on doing business with so and so, and they say, Oh, he's bakhil, he's a miser. It's not really related to business. That you want to know if he's honest or not. You can have an honest miser. So you don't tell what's re- unless it's related. And then, uh, so that's istifta, asking a fatwa. And then also uh, to warn people about uh, somebody. And then, arraf bid'atan fisq al wa arraf bid'atan fisq. That this is a tricky one because what's bid'ah? Even amongst the madhabs, there's khilaf about bid'ah. So it has to be mujma'ala bid'atihi. It has to be agreed upon. If there's khilaf, there's a khilaf. Some people recite mawlid. Some people, there's ulama that say that it's a bid'ah. There are valid ulama that say it's a bid'ah. But then there's other ulama that say it's a bid'ah hasana. So that's a khilaf. So you take what you feel comfortable with, who you follow. That's just a khilaf issue. You know, some people think using a subha is bid'ah. Their sahaba had ropes with knots on them. They used date uh, seeds. You know, it's not bid'ah. Imam Sahnun wrote a uh, thing about taking the subha as a, as a blessing. So these are things, unfortunately, some of the people that don't have a lot of knowledge get caught up in these uh, particulars. And then also fisq al-mujahir, somebody who is openly doing fisq, like openly drinking wine, openly fornicating, openly. You can warn people about that person. He's a bad person. If somebody does that, they're a bad person. You're warning them. That's perfectly acceptable. But you have to be careful. And this is why Isa alayhi salam, in the Muattab Imam Malik, Isa saw a pig and he said, you know, umfuz bi salam, go in peace to the pig. It's haram for Jews and Muslims. But he said, go in peace. And, and, and uh, one of the Hawari said, Do you talk to a pig like that? And he said, I don't want to accustom my tongue to saying anything bad. Isa passed by a dog in our tradition that was dead, a carcass. And his Hawariyun said, It smells so bad. And he said, وَمَا أَبْيَضَ asnana." But look how white its teeth are. They said he only saw the beauty in it. Alhamdulillah, qulu qawri hadu astaghfirullah li wa rakum wa risa'in wa muslimin. Astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Allahumma anta arhamar rahithni farhamna wa la tuakhidna bima nasina wa akhta'na. Allahumma aghfir lana warhamna. One of the things about life, and this is a great blessing, is, you know, in, in uh, 
in filmmaking, because I was involved in some documentaries, in filmmaking, they have something called Sony Pro Cut. You know, it's, it made editing very easy. Like you just, it used to be you had to cut the film, take it out, stick them t together. It's a very, very long process. Now it's all digi digitized and they just uh, edit it very quickly. We have a spiritual editing. It's called Tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He uh, Yamhu. Allah erases what He wills and He will make firm. In other words, establish it in the book. Everything is written. Just like now we have everything uh, recorded. You can't, if, if, if the Mukhabarat, you know, these secret services, these uh, agencies, now they have the capacity just if you're carrying your cell phone, they can just listen to your conversation. So we know that. Allah showed us this sign. But you can erase things and you do it by tawbah, making a sincere tawbah. Uh, Ahmad Zarruq, traditionally, if you did backbiting, you were supposed to go to a person and actually tell them. It was like confession. It's tough to do that. You go and say, I, I spoke ill of you. Ahmad Zarruq said the hearts change now. Like Sahaba, they were pure people. The early people, they were pure. If you told them, they would just forgive you. Because they see the sincerity of coming and asking forgiveness. But he said, now the hearts are corrupt. He said, so the, what you should do is make dua for them at least after five prayers. Give charity on their behalf. Something like that. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وتب علينا إنك أنت تواب رحيم اللهم أنزل علينا السكينة اللهم بارك في قلوبنا اللهم طهر قلوبا وألسنتنا اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يحفظون ويحافظون على ألسنتهم اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يأتون يوم القيامة بقلب سليم بقلب منيب اللهم اجعلنا من هؤلاء يا رحم الرحمين اللهم اجعل حسناتنا مقبولة لديك وجع سياتنا سيات المحبوبين لديك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أحسن عاقبتنا وأحسن عواقبنا يا أرحم الراحمين في الدنيا والآخرة أنت أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يرى البلاء منك لا من غيرك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين إذا ابتلوا صبروا وإذا أعطوا شكروا يا أرحم الراحمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما وأقيموا الصلاة لذكره